What's going on, everyone? Uh, I am here with a, a new feature we got this year I'm really excited about. Uh, we got Nick Starkle, former Texas A&M and Arkansas and San Jose State quarterback, uh, here to help us kind of walk through some of the things that went down in the A&M game last week, give a little bit of a offensive perspective and uh, a little bit of a just a college athlete perspective on some of these things. So first off, Nick, hey, thanks for joining us, man. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's good to... Uh to talk about the Aggies anytime that I can. Sure. So t tell the people out there a little bit of where you are and, and, and what you're doing now uh, post-college career. Yeah. Um, currently, I am pass game coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Corona Del Mar High School in Newport Beach, California. Um, absolutely loving post-playing life. Uh, I had a cup of coffee in the league with the Jets and with the Cowboys and at the end of the day, you know, was not on that final 53 man roster, did not make it. And so I decided to get into uh, coaching to get my fix of football. And I've absolutely loved every second of it. Hey, I, I hear the Jets need a quarterback. Uh, you how's the arm? Oh, man, <laughs> uh, I don't think I have the weight right now to uh, to be able to get hit by <laughs> those D linemen like Quinn and Williams. So uh, <laughs> they'll yeah. find something. But, I think but, Zach Wilson, uh, but you got an Achilles. That. So I guess that's a start right now. I do have two strong feelings. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're going to get into, I think, one of the biggest issues or biggest uh, points of, of, of talking with um, the a and offense from the game against Miami was the, the pass protection for, for Connor Wigman. Uh, first off, there, there's several different kinds of pass protection. There's slide protection. There's man protection. Could you just kind of define those two maybe for the, the, the average college football fans? So they know a little bit more about uh, what those protections look like with the offensive line and the backs and tight ends that are associated with that as well. 100%. So basically, there's three families of pass protections. Uh, the first family is full slide. And that's usually a Ringo or a lucky call, something with an R and an L that tells the entire line, all five linemen, they're sliding one way and the running back is just going to pick up on the other side. So that's a full slide. It's just, hey, you've got the gap to your right. There's man protections, which a lot of people call it Bob, big on big protection or 5-0. Hey, we're going to go man on with the center in the nose, man with the guard in the D tackle, and then man on the outside. It's a... Uh, there are some problems with that protection because you rely on five one-on-ones and there are also some issues with slide protection because now you're possibly putting your running back on a true pass rushing defense event and so what a lot of teams do every team does is they have combo protections where it'd be half slide and half man what that is going to do is that's going to allow us to build a wall either with three offensive linemen if it's a four down front or four offensive linemen, if it's a three down front, being able to isolate usually your, your best pass protectors, which are your tackles, letting them stay in man blocking schemes while protecting your interior linemen with a full slide kind of starting from the guard over or the center over. Uh, you're going to be able to pick up blitzes a lot better with that because now rather than just having one eye on your guy or two eyes on your guy, you're now going to have six eyes or even eight eyes on that mic ID or whoever's declared the mic that play in order to pick up a lot of different protections. And then your running back usually is just going to fit off of that. He would have, you know, check one to two, the other two linebackers usually, and then he can get out into his past um, concept, his route. Yeah, so uh, in the press conference this week, Jimbo Fisher, uh, when asked about some of the uh, pressures that were brought on to Connor Wigman, he had, according to Pro Football Focus, uh, the most dropbacks under pressure of any quarterback, and he was blitzed the second most of any quarterback in college football this week against Miami. We'll get into some of the interesting things where they were doing here in a little bit, but Jimbo Fisher said uh, that Connor did a good job in the game, but several times he uh, should have slid the front the other way, and he had to get the... Uh, Mike declaration to slide the other way for again for the the college football novice or the average college football fan what, what does he mean by that uh that that whole concept and uh uh what was Connor Wigman needing to do there or or just any quarterback needing to do in that kind of situation so the first thing uh that quarterbacks look for after they break the huddle and they know you know, hey, the pass protection's on me. I'm the one that's got to be clear. First thing that they're going to do is they're going to look in what's called the guard box. So they're going to say, okay, between the outside edge of my guards 
how many players do I have in that frame? If it's one, then that means, okay, now I'm going to have to have two Mike declarations. I'm going to say, okay, these are our two points right here that we're going to go to. If I've got two, whether it's one on the center and one on the outside edge of the guard, okay, now I know this is a four down base front. I'm just going to have to give one Mike declaration here. Depending on that, depending on where we want the running back to get out, where we want his eyes to start, that's where we're going to make our Mike declaration. Um, a lot of times you can eliminate who's blitzing based off of space and number of receivers on that side. There's a couple plays where uh, Connor had slid the line uh, towards a three receiver. So they were in about, they were in trips left. Uh, Connor slid the line left thinking, oh, looks like they're going to overload and blitz over here. But there was no one over number three, that number three, that third inside receiver. And so you've got to know, okay, one of those two dudes is going to bail out of here. He's got to be there for the pass coverage. They're not just going to leave three unblocked. If they were going to leave three uncovered or something like that, then they'd probably roll a safety down, which is called capping your blitzes. If you're going to blitz somebody, you replace it with coverage from a safety. You roll down towards it. That's when you get a lot of single high coverage. In a lot of those cases, they're already in single high, and they've got you know, a nickel and a linebacker looking like they're going to blitz with no one over number three. And so if I'm the quarterback and I'm making my mic declaration, I'm saying, okay, they're unsound if they bring both of those guys. Therefore, I can just tell my back, hey, you're scanning those two. You're going to pick up one of those two. Only one of them's coming. I'm going to slide the line the other way to make sure that I can actually account for and pick up the pressure that's coming from the other side. Uh, things like that, it, honestly, it takes time and it takes you really messing up for you to finally get that ingrained in your head of, oh, I just let a free blitzer come because they got me on that one. I wasn't, I wasn't really looking at the coverage behind it. I wasn't really looking of, can they actually send a blitz from there? I was just looking at the line and thinking, oh, there's a lot of guys on this side. I should probably send it this way rather than saying, let me take a whole snapshot of what's going on, where safeties are moving, where I actually have space on the field that they're going to have to drop back to and then make my mic declaration. Um, most colleges, uh, I know for a fact they do it at AM, they have a blitz cut up because on third down, everything changes. I mean, you get new pass rushers in the game, guys that are fresh, that were on the bench for first, second down, and now they're on the field strictly to just rush the passer. Sometimes they take out interior D linemen. They'll be standing up, moving everywhere. It's really important in the week to go watch that blitz cut up and say, where are they able to blitz from pre-snap? And then where do they actually send the blitz from once that ball is snapped? And you get sort of an idea throughout the week of, okay, if they're bringing this funky front where it kind of messes with our protection, I know they can only do one of two things out of this. And I can eliminate that based off of field space, based off of are the safeties rotating down to the right, to the left. And I can now send my protection towards that rotation knowing, okay, that safety is coming down. They're going to be blitzing from this side. Um, but again, it, it, it comes with experience. It comes with failure, honestly. Like failure is the biggest thing point of of emphasis and a lot of that because all of a sudden you've got a guy breathing down your neck that you didn't think was blitzing and you're like okay I'm not going to mess that up next time and and honestly hats off to to Miami um you know AM has a young team uh I, I think they returned how how many starters was it last year or this year from last they returned a decent amount of starters but a lot of them are sophomores and and because right. they had to start a lot of freshmen last year Right. A lot of freshmen played last year, probably kept it pretty basic in the pass mm -hmm. protection uh, world. This year, they're trying to get it a little bit going more and more. But if if you're a as a coordinator, I think it's, it's it's an absolutely you know brilliant idea to say, hey, we're going to make those receivers and make those quarterbacks think a lot on third down. And we're going to get creative with all of our pressures and our blitzes. So it doesn't surprise me that Connor Wegman was one of the most you know pressured or blitzed quarterbacks um, this past weekend. Um, by Miami. Yeah. Uh, you know, another thing Jimbo and Fisher mentioned, and it's something that most people, if you uh, have seen the w movie Wedding Crashers, you've heard the, the term hot route, but he was saying that there was some hot routes that they could have hit that uh, didn't necessarily happen to. What, what is the concept of a hot route and what is a quarterback looking for there? So a hot route uh, in simple terms is an adjustment made by the wide receivers when they identify 
a blitz that cannot get picked up. So a blitz that cannot get picked up. Say we send the line to the left towards our three receivers. So we've got a four-man slide on that side and our tackle's locked on the right side. And our running back is going to be looking, okay, one to two on the right, away from the slide. If he's got two guys blitzing where he has responsibility, he can only pick up one. It's the receiver's job now to know, okay, in the pass protection scheme, if these two guys come, I've got to adjust my route. Because let's say I'm running a 15-yard route. Well, that blitzer is going to get home before I run that 15-yard route, whether it's a dig, curl, whatever it is. And so most times a hot route is going to be a slant, a quick out, sometimes just a five-yard hitch, something that's going to allow the quarterback to get the ball out before that pressure actually gets into his face and gets a hit on him. Uh, that requires so much eye discipline. And Coach Fisher talks about it a lot. You see a little, you see a lot, you see a lot, you see nothing. And so if you're a, a sophomore or a freshman wide receiver and you're just trying to remember what route you have, it's going to be really hard for you to key in on the only two people that you need to focus on before you run your full route. And so it's a lot of communication that goes on during and before the play of when you're making your point saying, hey, looking at your receivers pointing, hey, these two, these two come, I need a hot route from you. Yeah. If these two come, I need you to a hot adjust. Like you got to adjust your route. You can't run your 20 yard comeback route. I need you to adjust right now because if those two are coming, we can't pick it up. And so that just comes with repetition again. And, um, you know, I'm sure that that they uh, they let them have it in the uh, in the film room the next day or, or on Monday because that is a crucial part of the game. Third down is the money down. If you cannot stay on the field on third down, you lose games. And if you're a defense and you can get off the field on third downs, you're going to win games. And so that comes with all of it. It comes with pass protection and it comes with receivers being able to hot route or adjust based on the pressures that they're getting. To, to give a little perspective um, for you personally, when, when was it in your college career that you felt like you had a grasp on both making these you know, slide uh, mic declarations, slide calls, hot routes? When did you feel like you were kind of well, well, uh, fundamentally sound and in, in, in it was kind of making those kinds of reads? So as crazy as it sounds, um, when I played in 2017, I was not responsible for any of the pass protection. I had Eric McCoy as my center, and he <laughs> was one of the smartest players I've ever played with. And so Eric handled every single pass protection. And that's bad. You don't want your center <laughs> declaring your pass protections because your quarterback does not always know when he's hot. And mm -hmm. so there was a lot of times where I drop back thinking I'm all good. And then I get smoked by a defensive end or by an outside linebacker that comes backside. And I'm like, man, I don't, I don't even know how that happened. Like what was going on with our line on that one? <laughs> But I just had basic rules. I just kind of knew, okay, we'll we'll slide right or we'll slide left. And I really did a disservice to myself uh, and to our team by not saying, hey, coach, give me that responsibility. Let me understand that part of the game. One, because it's going to make me a better quarterback. But two, it's going to open up our offense for so, so many more opportunities to have success, especially on a third down. And – that's a point of emphasis. I mean, we're coaching high school kids, and I'm like, no, you guys need to know our pass protections. You are pointing the mic not only on pass plays but on run plays as well because nowadays with the RPO, if your quarterback is not declaring the idea of who the line is going to work their blocks to and stuff, well, then you don't know who's unaccounted for in the box. Therefore, you don't know if you should actually read that guy. If he adds to the box, am I throwing it or is he blocked? So a lot of these things come down to just a, it's going to take time and it's going to take effort. and It's going to take a lot of hard work at the quarterback position in order to be right on these plays. And I, I think that Connor probably learned a lot this weekend. Um, and I think that you're going to see a huge improvement in Mike declaration in pass protection and probably IDs in the run game as well uh, uh, with him, you know, being the signal caller. So uh, I, we, we got a, a few plays here from the game, uh, especially I think some, some third down plays that you kind of looked at and saw. What, what did you see from the film in regards to some of these issues with uh, pass protection, with 
uh, IDing the, uh, the 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 Mike linebacker hot routes, all the above of what Jimbo Fisher's talking about, and plus what what you saw. Yeah, so one that that really comes to mind uh, that I'm thinking about it's third and eight, second quarter. We're up 17-14, 10 minutes left in the game. It's a it's a critical moment in the game. I mean, anytime that you're on the field on a third down, it, this is a critical down. Uh, like like we said, you know, you win games by converting on third down, and you win games on defense by getting off the field on third downs. And so I'm looking at one here where we've got trips left or an open set left, no tight end, 10 personnel, and defense is showing a – a man cover three single high safety look we've got three receivers to the left they've got a safety rotated down in a corner out there to the left there's no one over number three and a mistake or an area of improvement here would be connor sends the line slide to the left thinking oh they've got two guys that are standing up they look like they could blitz from that side so he sends the line left well, what ends up happening is someone's got to go cover th- that number three receiver. Somebody's got to get underneath that number three receiver. They're not just going to leave the middle of the field wide open. And it's probably not going to come from the right side. They're not going to run a guy all the way from the right side all the way back over to cover number three. That'd be a very, very exotic and honestly a very ballsy blitz to run. And so Connor slides the line left. He takes the bait. And what, a- what happens is he ends up getting two guys – that his running back is responsible for. Now, if he had pointed it out and he had told his receivers, look, if these two come, we're hot, then you might get a hot route or an adjustment right there. But on third and eight, a hot route or an adjustment might not make the first down. You'd rather get a solid protection and be able to get into your drop back pass concept and be able to work the call that was, you know, designed for that, you know, third down. And so it's, it's simple things where we could say I'm eliminating one of those two guys from blitzing. I'm going to put my back on the one that does blitz and I'm going to slide the line right because I know they can't bring both of those guys to the left. If that does happen, running back ends up picking up that mic that blitzes. They end up actually dropping out from the right side. So they only end up bringing four or five. They only end up bringing five and we've got six to protect and they still get home. And so that right there would be something that, you're probably looking in the film room saying, hey, this right here, Connor, we've, we've got to be a little bit better here and make sure that we're not taking the bait. When they walk those two dudes up, we got to know one of those has to drop out and let's slide, the, let's slide the line the other way, let the running back pick up that extra hat on the other side, and we're all good. Yeah, uh, I think there was one you were uh, looking at where they uh, shifted the offensive line and, and looped uh, the defensive end around too as well. Right. I mean, you got to give credit uh, where credit's due. And um, and Miami had some good stunts. So they call it a blitz when it's a linebacker that's that's adding on to it. And they call it a stunt whenever you've got movement from the front D lineman and then a, a defensive end kind of wrapping around. And so what they do here, Connor IDs the line correctly. This is actually in the first quarter, you know, third, third and three. So not a crazy blitz down. But you do get some simulated pressures where, hey, they're still just they're only going to bring five guys, but they're going to do some weird things with there. They might only bring four, but they're going to do some weird stunts and twists with it. And so on this one, Connor IDs it properly, slides the line left. He ends up getting a four man slide left. And what happens is that left side defensive end takes one step up the field, makes that left tackle commit to his pass set. And then he loops all the way around back to that man side where there's only one tackle and there's a running back who his guy didn't blitz. So he's getting out of there. Now he's going to get into his pass concept. This is where it is critical for the offensive line to communicate during the play Uh, at at San Jose state RO line. You could hear them give a go call. So when that left tackle pass set and he saw his defensive end loop back around, He'd be slamming that door shut to the right saying, go, go. And that go call has to be communicated from the tackle to the guard, to the center, to the other guard, all the way back in order to pick that up. Miami is basically saying here, hey, we're going to make your offensive line communicate mid-play in order to pick this up. But it's not a crazy exotic pressure, but it is – 
it's an effective one because it, it, it says, hey, we're going to make you guys communicate a lot mid-play. And if one of those pieces doesn't work, now we've got a free hitter. And um, and that's exactly what happened on that. He ends up seeing a guy barreling down the A-gap and, and has to flip the ball out. And we end up throwing an incompletion and having to get off the field on third down. Yeah, for sure. So I think this is the one thing that A&M fans probably want to hear the most from this. How easy is a fix of a fix are some of these issues is this something that you could foresee that they could get uh shored up before ulm or really more importantly before auburn the the next week or is this a a bigger issue what what kind of size issue is this are these little things i think this is a simple fix i i think it's a simple fix uh it comes down to studying the third down pressures because a lot of teams, they will bring in different packages and have different guys on the field during third down, and they're going to get a little bit more exotic and a little bit more ballsy in what they're doing. So I think it's, one, it's it's watching those third down cutups, and it doesn't have to be with the coaches. You can go in, you can grab those offensive linemen and those running backs and say, hey, look, after practice, we're going to spend an extra 30 minutes, and we're just going to watch their third down blitz cutup. And you do that Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday, you walk through them. Friday, you walk through them again. And by that time, you've seen every exotic look that they could give you, everything that they've possibly run. Because I'll tell you right now, AM does a great job of getting film. Even if that defensive coordinator wasn't there, they'll get film of him coaching three years ago at some other D3 school, wherever it was. And so it's taken the time to say, hey, we're, we're going to value this because it's going to keep us on the field. It's going to help us sustain drive. It's going to help us win games ultimately. So let's take that extra time, 30 minutes a day, and this problem is solved. And you're not going to get a pressure that you have not seen or have not thought of um, on a Saturday that you didn't already work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday throughout the week. Sure thing. Well, before we go, Nick, who do the Sea Kings have this week? Sea Kings are on a bye this week. <laughs> there you go. So I am headed to Hawaii this weekend. I'm going to go watch St. John Bosco play Kahuku High School on Saturday night. I got a couple of friends that are on both staffs there, a couple of friends that live down on the North Shore, and so I'm going to go down and watch that game on Saturday. I think it should be mandatory that all coaches get friends who coach high school football in Hawaii, right? Like that That sounds like the life. Oh. That that sounds like the life, 100%. And so I'm going to go down there, hang out with the guys, and, uh, and hopefully watch a really good football game. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for uh, giving us some time. Hopefully we can uh, keep this rolling through the season. I know you got a busy schedule, and you're uh, uh, racking up some Ws over there with Corona Del Mar. But, again, thanks for doing this. And uh, be sure to check theeagle.com for all our continuing uh, coverage of the Aggies uh, matchup this weekend against Louisiana Monroe.